Hi, my name is Matthew Kamek, and I'm very excited to tell you about my game, Electoral Barrage. In Electoral Barrage, you are a candidate for the presidential seat or nominee of the United States of America. The game plays two to six players, takes about 25 to 60 minutes to play, and is very approachable for all skill levels, ages eight and up. The game is based off of the real-life electoral college numbers and even factors in some of the population densities as found around the United States. The goal of the game is to have the most electoral votes after the end of a series of nine rounds. In each round, players take alternating turns placing and then immediately resolving their staffers. After placing a staffer, the player rolls the die and determines if they benefited. Play continues to the next player allowing them to place and resolve one of their staffers. The round ends after all staffers are placed and resolved. Each player takes the role of one of the game characters based on the character's background. Each game character has a special bonus ability. These abilities include things like the occasional reroll, die modifiers, and an end of game reward. Each state has a matching color with either one, two, or three stars on it, denoting the difficulty to win and reward if won. Red colored states are easy to win, but yield less electoral votes. At the top of the game board are three more areas to also place your staffers during the rounds. These areas allow you to break ties for majority control of a state, run attack ads to kick out other players' pieces, and boost your rolls. So there you have it. Electoral Barrage combines an engaging mix of RNG and strategy as you attempt to outwit your opponents. This game is accessible to both geeks and grandmas alike. You might even learn something about the Electoral College system. Thanks so much for watching. Prototype didn't arrive in time for which to film with, so I loaded it into this simulator and I can play a quick round for you to show you how the game plays. Purple's gonna go first, Purple's gonna go on one of the town hall. That gives them a bonus so that on a future roll they can add plus one or even plus two. It's plus one if they declare after the roll and it's plus two if they declare before. Everyone's decided that's pretty good. They follow suit. Now it's Purple's turn again. Purple decides to go for California. So Purple's going to redeem one of their town hall. So they're going to knock the guy over. Now they're rolling plus two. They roll the die. Three plus two is five. They got it. So it was a good play. Now they put one of their delegates on the state, indicating that they have won that successfully. If the game were to end right now, they would take California because they do have the majority control there. Red decides to go for Illinois. Red uh, decides not to redeem one of their st staffers just yet. So they decide to roll and they got it. Good, ch good call, Red. Okay, so they put one of their staffers there. Yellow decides to go for an uncontested state. How about Texas? And they're going to redeem it. Okay, and they roll. Ah, they didn't re even need it, but it was a good safety net, so they put one of their guys there. Okay, blue's last up. Blue has decided to go down here on Florida, and blue is going to redeem their piece. And blue got a one. Ah, blue's special ability kicks in now, if they choose, so we'll go down there. Once per round, if they roll a one, they may turn it into a six. So they just won it because of their ability. They can only do that once per round, though. So let's just grab one of the pieces for them. Okay, perfect. Okay, back to purple. Purple decides they're really seeking California. They don't have any town halls left, so they're gonna roll and they get a two. Tough luck, purple. Okay, red decides to go. Red decides to go for Alabama. It's a pretty high chance of getting Alabama for quite a lot of reward, so they roll there. Anything other than a one, so they won that one. So red puts one of their pieces there. Okay, now it's yellow's turn. Yellow decides to go on attack ads. Now yellow can go for a state that has already has a delegate in it. They're going to go for California. So they roll the same odds. Five or six, they got it. So now they kick purple out. They don't get to put their guy in there because they didn't send their staffer there. But they do get to eject or remove the staffer that was already there. But at the same odds that it was put in. Okay, now it's blue's turn. Blue decides to come in for California. Blue rolls. Okay, a one. They already used their ability. They can't use it twice. Okay, now it's back to Purple's turn. Purple doesn't like what Yellow did, so Purple decides to come over here. 
and take one of the empty spots, hoping that they get a tie. They roll, they get a five. So purple's done it. Now, if purple and uh, yellow end the game in a tie, it would have to break it. The mechanics to break a, a tie is a simple coin flip. Heads or tails, called in the air. Whoever doesn't call it, rolls it. Or, uh, if you have anything in the absentee ballot. So that's what uh, blue decides to do right now. Blue puts one up here in the absentee ballot, and they immediately get a chip up here. Then they have to flip it over. It is a ballot box. You can't see what's inside it. And that means at the end of the game, not this round, if there are any ties, they would be able to pull this chip off, redeeming it, breaking the tie. It is possible to redeem multiple absentees for the same state. All right, red gets to go. I may have gone out of order here, but that doesn't matter. He's going to go for another one of the easy ones, South Carolina. He rolls. Three. If they wanted, they could knock this down right now, make that a four. They don't need to. Probably wasn't the best strategy for red. Okay, now we've got a yellow one. Yellow decides to go in California. Why not? A four. Not enough. Now, does yellow have the ability to do anything about that? Yes. Add a plus one to a single st state roll. So with their ability, they now have successfully won that. Okay. Now that everyone's placed, all of their staffers wanted a turn and all have been resolved. Even though this red one up here was never resolved, he neglected to use it. So tough luck, red. This ends the first round. Then it would be the next person's turn. I got these out of order. So purple went first. We'll flip that over. And now it's the next person's up. Now it's red's turn to go first. And then, and so on and so forth. All the way for nine rounds. You see on every odd round, a new meeple or staffer is injected into the game with uh, the last round being the most chaotic with two extra ones. Hi, one quick last summary. A little bit more about myself. I do remote computer tech support by day. It's the first time I've ever made a board game like this. I'm normally just a father of four. My wife has been very supportive. I think one of the strengths is the uh, introduction to a new crowd of a worker placement mechanic. Uh, a lot of the people that I've play tested it with haven't strayed outside of Monopoly and Risk, and they found it quite a lot of fun. They've, uh, they've given me a lot of positive feedback that uh, they've never played such a game as this, and they, they, they really enjoyed it at the end. I think also the personal connection that people have with some of the landmark states. Uh, I've been there. I want to fight for that. I've, my grandma lives there. I think, I think that's also a strength that it's had. But I think it's pretty balanced, uh, in my opinion, from a lot of the play tests I've had. Uh, I thank you so much for your time and consideration, and I do look forward to your uh, critiques and constructive criticism. Thank you.